Hey guys, how's it going? It's Chris coming at you from Chris Loves Comments at EmpireCV.tv uh, at YouTube.com. Please subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more videos for you to look at, especially with free comic book day coming up, but we're going to talk about that later. It's going to be a little bit shorter today. I only got three, uh, three comics to talk about, and I got a graphic novel, um, but uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be good. So let's, let's take a look at Mara, number four, uh, six issue mini coming from Brian Wood and Ming Doyle. And I think Jordi Belair on colors. Um, I just want to mention Jordi Belair real quick. Quick spotlight. Uh, she does a great on color. She's doing Nowhere Men. She's doing a lot of Marvel books. She's doing um, a lot of Image books. She's doing it all, and uh, she is uh, definitely worth mentioning. So she's a great. She colors all the books. Uh, she inks. I don't think she inks them, but no, is that the same thing? I think it is. Anyway, Mara. We see Mara. Uh, Mara Prince. She got captured by the government. They're gonna use her. Sort of like if you if you're following with a indestructible Hulk right now and how their shields hired him and they're he's sort of like a controlled berserker they're gonna they're gonna just drop him wherever he needs to go and he's gonna just berserk around and kill every uh, not kill everything but the fight shields battles for them the big battles that's basically what Mara's there to do that's what basically what the government wants her to do there uh, she's their secret weapon and in this issue we see Mara she escapes she wants to do her own thing and we see more this basically is a more, an issue more for Mara's character development. And uh, it's good. I really I enjoy it. Uh, I was going to drop it, but then I realized <coughs> that I missed it too much. I think I'm going to really attach to Mara. Um, and Ming Doyle, her art is really beautiful. And Brian Wood, he's also writing Star Wars, which I'm really enjoying. He's writing Conan. He's going to be writing the new X-Men all-girl title from uh, Marvel Now, which I think comes out in about two weeks. So I'm excited for that. So Brian Wood. But it's good. So it's, it's only got two issues left. I think you can still uh, pick up all the issues. Uh, it'll, be in a tra it'll be in a trade soon, but uh, Mara, it's good. Um, next we have Justice League number 19. Uh, in this issue, uh, what, 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 what uh, DC's doing this month is they're doing the, what, the WTF covers. They were originally going to stamp it with WTF, but instead they did a fold-out. Um, and you see that uh, Superman is actually hiding for someone who's holding kryptonite. Um, and in th this issue, uh, someone breaks into the Batcave takes kryptonite so they can use it against Superman um, and they turn, they're trying to figure out who it is. Batman knows that uh, Superman and Diana, uh, Wonder Woman, are in fact dating. They're kissing, they're, they're being loving, you know, and, um, and uh, we see that Batman's ultimate detective and I really appreciate that. We see the team more on a um, low level, they're, they're talking relationships, they're dealing with that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I love that Aquaman and Cyborg helped Batman in the beginning of the book. Um, and we see, uh, it's just, it's, I mean, it's okay. Uh, what I really want to talk about, though, is the Shazam backup. And uh, it's coming to a head. We're, we're, we're all, uh, Shazam, uh, Billy Batson finally meets uh, Black Adam. He comes out of hiding and, and meets Black Adam. And Black Adam's like, I'm going to kill you. So uh, it's good. I can't wait for Shazam. I'm going to get the trade that's coming out. It's going to be all the backup features in one book. Um, I think Shazam should be getting his own book anytime now. If he doesn't, it'll be a travesty. I just hope Joe Sean doesn't write it. I mean, he's been doing a good job on the backups, but um, honestly, I think Jeff Johns, whoops, hit my head. Je Jeff Johns is a little bit overrated. Um, but this is Justice League number 19. I'm going to be dropping it soon uh, just because I want to keep all the Shazam backups. I want to collect those. Um, but uh, who knows? Let's see if Jeff, Jeff Johns can keep me on it. So next and finally, we have Black Beetle number three out of the four issue mini that's coming out from Francesco Branca Villa. He put number zero out in Dark Horse Presents, um, and it's been good. Francesco, Francesco Branca Villa, he writes it, he uh, illustrates it, he colors it, he inks it, he, um, he pencils it, he does everything for this book, and it is beautiful. And it, it, it really is. I mean, it, he is... Uh, he is just powering his way. He jumped onto the scene. He's doing a lot of Marvel uh, book covers. He was on um, Batman: The Black Ear, the, the, the Black Mirror, which uh, Scott Snyder was doing for his uh, his run on Detective Comics. He was doing the backup issue uh, story for that with uh, with James Gordon and Barbara Gordon and all that crazy stuff that happened. Uh, but uh, it, he he has his own book. This is three of four. Uh, it's going to be in trade soon, um, but we basically see uh, Black Beetle trying to get to the bottom of what's going on, who Labyrintho is, what's going on with the cult. Um, Labyrintho, such a good, pulpy character villain, and I really appreciate that about, uh, appreciate about that, that about Francesco Francavilla because he can write some good pulpy. He can also draw it. It's a very beautiful book. It's very nice. It's very, um, it's easy to read. Um, it's engaging. It has a lot of action. And uh, Black Beetle, new character. I know there's Black Beetle in the DC universe, and uh, um, but uh, it's uh, it says trademarked, so I don't know. But yeah, so it's good. Um, and uh, you'll be able to get them all. Um, 
you should be able to get them all and uh, it's just it's really really good so next and finally we have our graphic of the week trade paperback a while ago um i just found out about this uh dc put out a six issue mini from darwin cook with uh and the six issue comic books they were really i think they were pretty thick and they were a lot more expensive than um a regular comic book but they're be, they're collected in the new frontier that's called the the comic book series is called the new frontier um it's collected in, in two graphic uh sorry two trades and the first trade is amazing if you haven't read Tar darwin cook um you have to see it you have to read it you have to look at his, his illustrations it's 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 beautiful i mean it's it's gorgeous it's 15 style uh 50 styles of illustrations. It is a lot of Americana going on in there. Uh, basically, in the story, we see uh, the first we have the first uh, graphic, or I need to stop calling it graphic. The first trade, um, we see that Martian Manhunter has come to Earth. Um, something's going on with this thing called the Center. It's going to come to Earth and uh, destroy stuff. Martian Manhunter's on Earth. Um, he's trying to hide. Batman, we see Batman, we see Wonder Woman and Superman fighting in the war together. Um, so it's basically set in the 50s and it's really cool. Challengers, Challengers of the Unknown takes a really um, unexpected uh, for, step to the forefront in these two trades. Um, it was really cool because I got to see some good in-depth on the Challengers, uh, Challengers of the Unknown. They had a DC Presents with the New 52 for about five issues. I didn't know a lot about them, but now I do. And it's really, really cool. The, I mean, the art is just beautiful though. And, and that's what really sold me. It's just how beautiful the art is, and I think it's just beautiful. It's great, and um, you know, it, it just makes me want to read it. It's nostalgic. We see the Flash, we see um, Captain Cold, we see um, Superman, we see a lot of different people, and um, it's just awesome. It's a really good book. It reminds it's like I said, nostalgic. It takes me back to an era which I never lived in, but I know all about Americana. It's uh, it's really nice. So this is the graphic novel number one, trade number one. Trade number two, you can pick these up for about 20 bucks, um, and uh, they're, they're, it's just a fun, great read. It doesn't, um, it doesn't retcon anything, it doesn't change um, the mythos, it doesn't change anything like that. Um, it's just a fun, great read. You have to have this in your collection. So that's it, guys. Remember, uh, Free Comic Book Day is coming up uh, in two weeks, May 5th, uh, May, actually May 4th. And uh, we're going to be uh, giving away over 15,000 free comic books at 9 o'clock in the morning at Empire's Comics Vault. It's going to be fun. We're going to have our own little mini con um, uh, in, in the store in the morning. You're going to be able to see from artists, from writers. You're going to be able to talk to them, get autographs, get things signed, buy things. There's going to be food. There's going to be entertainment. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so come, make sure to come on down to that 1120 uh, Fulton Avenue, Sweet K. Um, and it'll be a lot, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be great. If you've never been to a free comic book day before, it's a good experience. So it's really awesome. Also look out for next week. I'm going to be doing a little video about the free comic books that are going to be, um, being given out on that Saturday and, uh, be reviewing them, telling you what you should pick up. So look out for that. Okay guys, so have a great week. Yeah, yeah.